you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the Smart Zone controller based on a high scale deployment of the 5.2 Smart Zone release. The videos in this series will show the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, we will demonstrate the Guest Pass portal and show the options for generating guest passes. We will then utilize a guest pass to connect to our created guest WLAN. Let's get started. In a previous video, we created the guest access portal. We created a guest pass administrator account and guest pass administrator group and joined those two together. We also created a guest WLAN that uses the guest access portal that we created. Uh, in this video, we're going to log in with the guest pass administrator account that we created and take a look at the options that the guest pass administrator has. So we've entered in the credentials here that we created and we're gonna choose log in. Logged in as the guest pass admin, we can see that we just have a small subset of the normal administrator options, uh, namely on the left hand side, just clients, guests, and then two tabs. We've got access to the guest pass tab and the guest pass template tab. We're going to take a look at the guest pass template first. So the guest pass template tab allows you to uh, create or modify the instruction templates of either the HTML version of these templates or the SMS version of these templates. These are the templates uh, that get sent to the users as instructions for connecting to the guest uh, WLAN with the template. Uh, if I just drag one of these over, we can take a look at uh, exactly what the template looks like. So again, this can be downloaded uh, and modified and then re-uploaded, but you can see here that um, it's got some values here for the guest name, the guest key, the valid period, and the guest WLAN. So again, this can be completely modified. You could, you could change this, uh, add logos, change the wording, and then um, change the instructions if you had different instructions that you wanted them to perform to access your your guest network. So if you wanted to modify one of these templates, um, all you have to do is select the actual template. So let's look at the HTML default HTML template. So if we just click on default HTML, we can see that we're actually given a preview of what this template looks like. Uh, we are then given the option to download the template. Um, so same thing with the SMS version of the template. If we click the default text down here and we scroll down, we can see uh, what the template for the SMS guest instruction looks like. So we can download this, modify it, and then re-upload it. Uh, and you can have multiple um, templates. You don't have to just have one specific HTML template. You could have a few custom templates if you wanted to. So you would just upload um, your custom template and select where that template is and choose to upload it. So now we have two templates that we could utilize to uh, create guest instructions. Now that we've taken a look at guest pass templates, let's talk about the actual guest pass generation. We're going to go over to the guest pass tab here. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is the guest instruction HTML template. So which template do we want to use? So obviously we've got the option for the one that we've created or the default one. So we can select either one of these. So if you had multiple instruction templates, which one do you want to use for the generation of the instructions? Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my default um, HTML template. Our options from there are then to either generate guest passes or import a guest pass list. So the import is more of a bulk creation. So I'm actually going to start with that option first. We're going to take a look at that. So I'm going to choose import guest pass. The first thing I'm going to be asked to provide is a CSV file. So I do have a CSV file that I created. It has a list of guest names, um, just some comments about what these are for, and then there is a key field. Um, an empty field um, implies obviously that the random uh, or that a key will be randomly generated, but we could specify um, specific characters here. So if we wanted to use their last names or something to get them into the uh, network, we could certainly populate the keys ourselves and import them. Um, I'm gonna leave them blank so that we get the random key and I'm going to browse to that CSV and import it. Once we import it, we can see that 10 guest passes have been identified. That is because I had 10 users uh, specifically for this vendor meeting that I wanted to give a guest pass to. 
Our next uh, option is going to be to specify which guest WLAN um, I want these passes to apply to. I've only got one guest WLAN in demo zone one. If I had multiple guest WLANs, I, I could select which of those guest WLANs I wanted these passes to apply to, but I've only got the one here, so I'm gonna leave guest of demo zone one selected. We can then choose how long we want the passes to be valid. So do we want to have uh, one day, one hour, one week, um, or do we want maybe multiple hours? So um, in this particular case, we've got a um, afternoon meeting um, that we want these passes to be valid for. So our next option is pass effective since. So when do we want to start the timer basically for these passes? Do we want the four hours to be effective from the creation time or do we want the validity to be effective from the first use? So maybe we're uh, creating these guest passes um, in the morning, but our, our meeting is not until the afternoon. So I'm going to actually choose effective from first use. If I created them in the morning, they might be expired by the time they get used. So I'm going to choose effective from first use here. Uh, we can then optionally or additionally specify um, when to expire these guest passes if they're not used. So the default is seven days, but we could say, you know, we can modify this. If we haven't uh, used these in two days, go ahead and flush them. That, that's fine. And then the last option there is how many devices per pass do we want to allow? Do we want to limit this to one device per pass? Um, maybe they've got a, a couple. We could say uh, a laptop and a phone, um, or do you want to do unlimited? So if we choose this and we change it, um, we can change the session duration. So by default, the session duration is off, but if we set this to on, uh, we can change uh, when we require the guest to re-log in after. So in this particular case, for a, meet, a meeting that is intending to be only four hours and an afternoon access, uh, we're just gonna turn the duration off for this, and then we're gonna choose import. So we can see that the import was uh, successful. We've got our guests here. We've got our keys. Uh, we see which WLANs that these um, apply to. So our options from here are to select the guest. Uh, we can then print the uh, instruction template. We can export them into a CSV. We could email these, SMS these. We could delete them if we no longer wanted them or we could disable them. Um, so let's look at just the printed template. So I'm gonna click print selected for Chris here and then I'm gonna bring over what this looks like. So again, this is the template that we had specified for these. So we can see that this is specific to Chris S. We can see what his guest pass key is. We see how long it is valid and which network um, it is applying to. So in this case, this is exactly what we are looking for. Let's take a look at generating just guest passes without using the import process. When we select generate guest pass, um, you can see a lot of these options are similar. We don't have the option to import a bulk list. So instead, what we have is the guest name. So we can specify um, vendor uh, user here. We can specify which WLAN that this would apply to, the number of passes that we're looking to create. Um, this one's important. So if we leave the number of passes to one, we can actually turn off the auto-generate um, and specify our own pass value here. However, if we set this to multiple, um, it will automatically generate these for us. It does not give us the option to create the pass values. So I'm gonna just leave this as one and I'm going to specify a um, value of vendor one, two, three, X, Y, Z. So that will be the pass um, value for our vendor user. We ag again get to pick when it's effective from. So is it from creation or the first use? How many devices are the, is this particular pass limited to? And then we can click generate. So now you can see that we've got 11 records. If we go to the next page, we can see vendor user, and we can see our key here that we've specified, vendor 123XYZ. So now that we've created some guest passes, let's take a look at the connection process into the guest WLAN. So I'm going to use a mobile phone to do this. So I'm bringing up the mobile phone, and we can see that we've got a few networks available, one of them being guest. So we're going to select guest here. We're gonna switch over to our browser 
we get, might get a message about this not having internet access. We're going to move that out of the way for now. And we're going to try to navigate to the wifi.org website. So once we navigate over to the wifi.org, we'll notice that we're redirected to the guest access login. So here's where we're specifying our guest pass. So I'm going to use vendor 123XYZ. and then choose login. You can see that they, we are then met with the terms and conditions. So we did modify these as part of the guest access portal. We're gonna choose accept and continue. And then we see that we are successfully authenticated as a wireless guest. It says how long we're valid for, and then we are given the option to continue. And you will notice that we are then redirected to the Comscope website. So these are all options that we specified in our portal and it is functioning as we intended. That's it for this one. Thank you for taking the time to view this demonstration and we hope you can catch other demonstration videos in our SmartZone 5.2 series.